No, we begin to take a look at the migration out. That really started in the 50s. They began to disinvest in the cities way before 67. One of the stories that I have is Bobby Burrell with his family. He had about four of the brothers and, and a couple of sisters, and they were around my dad's barbershop all the time. And they really became intertwined, really as families, really. We were kind of merged together there. And it was my understanding that the folks were getting ready to move, and they were moving because their concern is that there wasn't going to be a level of security, that property values were going to go down, and also, they were hopeful, but was not really had the faith that it would recover in time to give them the kind of uh, life that they wanted for their children. That was saddening because not only was it his, then it became a domino effect with many different families. And when we began to take a look over time, we began to see kind of a skeletal structure of beautiful homes that had become vacant. Some of the homes, of course, that needed repair, but decided that they were not going to make that investment, but rather invest in another location. Detroit is, is a very desolate place. We had two million people 50 years ago. 10 years ago, we had a million one. We're down around 600,000 people. Detroit is such a vast uh, city, 149 square miles, uh, one of the largest cities in the United States via landmass. The big thing that I learned when I got to Detroit is there's so much space. There's so much freedom. Artists seem to come here. They gravitate to this place because there's such an abundance of open space to do what most people can't do in New York or in Miami or San Francisco. The great thing about Detroit is that it's, its surroundings. You know, this beautiful art on this city that is falling apart. And part of that with the lax enforcement, the lack of police, the lack of fire, the amount of blight that wasn't being addressed actually encouraged street art to take form and foothold in Detroit. And, you know, opportunity exists when you've hit the bottom. And optimism brews when there is no other option but to be optimistic. I moved to Detroit in 2010. I, I decided within the first two days that I was definitely going to move to Detroit for the rest of my life. Part of it was the ability to be able to explore this, like, post-industrial, post-capitalist kind of urban landscape. The main thing is cheap property. Artists need to <laughs> live cheap, and they're usually a great incubator for a neighborhood. In Detroit, you get all the great things that a big city has, you know, at half the price. We're attracting a lot of young people because of the cost of living, and the jobs that are being offered are attractive to younger people. Those younger people are far more acceptive of spray paint as an art form. Uh, the culture of street art in Detroit is pretty interesting. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty uh, a new community that's starting to blossom. They were a very humble group. They get up, they go to a job that they may not like, and it's their release. When they get an opportunity, you know, they're always extremely appreciative. When they get invited to show in a gallery, you know, it's life-changing for them. I believe what we're doing as an artist community in Detroit by really collaborating and and getting together and completing projects and pushing each other's artwork out there, I believe it's, it's, it's let us know it's a cultural melting pot. As more artists move here, as more artists come to see other work around here, I think it's really important for artists to be supportive of one another. To, to embrace new artists and everything like that, yeah, I, I, I totally embrace them. You know, if you have more artists, it helps you grow. And I think that is very important to, you know, keeping the artists that we're attracting here. If you build it, they will come, but if they build it, they will stay. 
We've seen already how the present has been affected by graffiti art and street art in the city of Detroit. And it has been very positively received in bringing people back. It softened the blow. Last summer, the new administration had a crackdown on what they were, were looking at as uh, graffiti and vandalism. Um, it was in a unique twist of fate. Uh, the community responded by telling the mayor in an uproar that this is beautification. We're asking artists to paint on our buildings. People are into it more, it's, and they're seeing the value in the artistic side of it and less value in the actual vandalism part of it, which I think is important. I just did a mural, a uh, commission mural, in Morningside Community in Detroit's east side. This community put together the, the funds to clean up this lot. It erected like this 32 foot long wall, bought all the paint for me and I came out and did it. And they loved it. By doing stuff like that, giving to the community is a huge thing for them. I think that makes them feel much more accepting and welcome to street art because they see that what positive comes out of it. It only took five years for it to like just explode. There are now all these spots in Detroit that people want to see. That has created commerce and created jobs in ways that people normally wouldn't even have thought. Because now you can sign up for a bike tour and they will give you a bike tour around the city of Detroit, showing you all the graffiti, stopping at the spots, telling you about the artists. It's bringing in people from other countries that want to come to Detroit to see what's happening here. That builds commerce. It builds businesses. It helps create a visual stimulus. You know, curators and gallerists are getting um, savvy to the idea that people are interested in buying art from Detroit. And again, talking about that Detroit brand, and I think people are starting to become smart. You'd be surprised because a lot of people love local art and they love supporting local artists. But the street art galleries, their openings are full-blown parties, and the ages they are attracting is a full spectrum from 16-year-olds to 60-year-olds. They're actually legitimizing street art where banks are and people walk. That bleeds off into the rest of society. This whole moment is making people who haven't, for whatever reason, they've forgotten how to take that second look. People are looking at Detroit again. What I've noticed is that now that people are starting to invest in the city more, they realize that investing into the arts that are visual on the outsides are profitable in the same ways. Um, you know, you have some of the corporations and the businessmen now seeing art as a valuable asset to our city and finding ways to fund projects, support galleries, festivals. I think, you know, as we continue to see Detroit grow into this idea of being this newfound art city, one of the great opportunities will be for the city, the, the government structure, to, to lean on artists a bit, to, to bring artists to the table more. Art can become a problem-solving tool for some of the city's larger issues. There's a velocity right now to what's happening in Detroit. That will be the measure of whether or not we pull ourselves beyond the notion of just being a city of murals, but just a city where artists can thrive. All over the world, the whisper is that Detroit is the new mecca of what street art and graffiti art is. People are traveling from all over to see that. The street art that you see in Detroit right now is probably about 80% homegrown. I do think that the 20% that is done by, by traveling artists uh, or invited artists get far more attention. This kind of stuff happens everywhere, you know, like it's, in Paris it's the same, there's a lot of people who come from outside of Paris and paint walls. I got my first bigger wall in Paris last year, you know, and I've been painting in Paris for 10 years. It's like that anywhere. No one is a prophet in their own country, that's what French people say. The artist has got 10, 10 years in the game, 5 years, 20 years. They should be welcomed in, in the same way. The, an artist with a global name can kind of come to town and do an amazing thing. When you when you have a real Detroit artist, it's it's still a struggle for them because you're overshadowed by this over here and this over here and this over. You know what I'm saying? Because it's commercial. It's not as easy as you think being a Detroit artist. You know, the people that are here deserve the credit for being here. 
They've put in their time and built their own community. For people like me who are coming from the outside, not coming in and just kind of dumping my thoughts and outlook on it, but trying to be a quiet observer until I can understand and respect what's already here. Being an out-of-towner, I feel like obviously I need to pay respects to the people that actually live here. I am standing next to like other dope artists from Detroit and from Australia and New Zealand and New York. It's just, it's really all art love. So it just adds to the awesomeness of this city. There's plenty for everyone to go around. There's plenty of walls for everyone to get. I think people just need to be a little bit more open-minded, accepting of one another and support one another. I think that's very important for Detroit right now. I personally think it's, you know, you, we can only benefit from collaboration and um, can, the meeting of minds and the residual influence that someone leaves on another person or place. And it also challenges them to up their own game to stand out amongst the giants of the art form. I know firsthand that art can change lives. It changed my life. You know, I, I, I didn't have the best grades growing up. I used to paint my smile faces of vacant homes in my neighborhood. Uh, and I would put keep smiling, I would put hope and joy. And so when I noticed this, uh, you know, art is a part of your feelings. Artists are making art because they, they want to talk about some things that people aren't talking about, right? Like one of the great things about street art, graffiti, even just visual art in general, is you get to use these metaphors and you get to use symbolism and you get to have a conversation about what you want to, but there's so many ways for people to come in and interpret it. The colors sort of are a metaphor for this place, you know, and I think murals, they just make us look. You have all kinds of mixed reactions, right? You have people that love it, people that hate it, people that get confused by it, and I think all, all of that is a all of that is appropriate. Hopefully, even the person who hates it walks away and at least <laughs> starts to thinking about it, right? You get you get them inside their head. A part of what's happening here and the support that's going on encourages artists to do what they do best, which is stand on the edges of the established or the status quo or the mainstream culture and look in and say, well, why are we doing this? Why does that make sense? Now there's this whole conversation of like the new Detroit. And I think as artists, we need to really stay involved with this conversation. The integrity of the city, the integrity of the artists, and the integrity of everything when it comes to new Detroit. It's gonna stay, it's because we never gave up. We always stood close to our city. So when you have the new people come in, they are the change. They are the new blood. We're just gonna evolve with you. There's a tension that sort of overrides this notion that Detroit is being reborn by the interests of people who have suddenly discovered it as a place to be as the place to be. I think that narrative has created a natural tension. And I think, you know, I've met a lot of artists who've come here, and some of them, to their credit, they, came, they admit that they came with the misconception that, hey, I can come here, I can do something easy, do something free, I can do anything in Detroit. It's a quote unquote blank canvas. And along the way, truth met them, and in some cases, truth slapped them in the face. But some have told me that they were better for it. They were better for coming with the false notion and really realizing that. This is a city far more complex than it's ever been depicted. And it sort of stretched them, made them better artists, but better than that, made them better people. You have to come here. It changes you. It changes your perception of Detroit. And I think that the art and the visual and taking those things that are so hopeless, and then they blow out a beautiful mural on top of that. You don't no longer look at the urban decay as decay. I think how uh, art plays a role in keeping the hope and faith and the love of the city alive, the soul of the city alive, it's, it's vital. You know, that's, if you, I've, I've known artists from every walk of life in the city of Detroit. So it's interesting to see that broad spectrum of people and they all have the same fire and soul in them. And that to me is the soul of Detroit. It, it won't really embrace you until you embrace it and you have to peel off a lot of ego and a lot of preconceived notions before Detroit can appreciate you.
at core, that's kind of what makes Detroit cool. It's a city where you've got to grind, you've got to kind of put your elbows into anything you do if you're going to be here. It, it's a survivor city. Don't try to come fix Detroit. Don't kind of try to come just take advantage of Detroit. Come here and figure out what's going on and spend your first couple years getting involved in other community projects. You'll quickly figure out that people hold the door open for you. I think that's what's gonna be the glue that keeps the city together to rebuild. The creativity in the city is happening in spite of its history, in spite of its struggles, in spite of you know, all the negative things we've been told to believe about ourselves. It's a new chapter. It's just, it's a next chapter in a place that's had some really, really fascinating chapters. This, though, could be a chapter that just deepens the whole story because I think, you know, all of us together, we get to choose. That's beauty. <laughs>